ஸ்ரீமதே ஷடகோபாய நமக ஸ்ரீமதே ராமானுஜாய நமக ஸ்ரீமத் வரவரமுனையே நமக ஸ்ரீவானாச்சல மகாமுனையே நமக We are going to talk about Sri Vaishnavam. I started with some salutation to our Acharyas. Shatakopa is Namalwar. He is the chief among the Alwars. And then there is Ramanuja. who is considered as the chief among the acharyas and then there is varavara muni shri manavala mamunigal he is the incarnation of ramanuja and then i recited vanachala mahamunaye namaha this indicates the first year of vanamamalai mat shri ponadikal jiyar shri vanamamalai jiyar he is the disciple of manavala mamunigal that is an i recited a his name is due to my being a disciple of this mat so when we look into shri vaishnavam it is the eternal sampradayam which is which was originated by lord shriman narayana himself as the term says vaishnavam it indicates there is a relationship with vishnu vishnu means all pervading he is popularly known by the name narayana narayana is a unique name that it can only fit vishnu in sanskritam most of the names or the words have meanings still these words also indicate a person or an object generally in in the world so there is etymology the root meaning of the word which will indicate something and then there is also common practice of the particular word how that word is used and what it indicates usually one of the well known examples for this is shiva shiva means auspicious in its etymology but it commonly indicates rudra or shankara lot of the words are most of the words are like this they will have a root meaning but also it will have a common meaning but if you look at the if we look at the name or the word narayana in either way whether it is the etymology the root of the, me, the root meaning of the word or the common meaning of the word or the common practice a common usage of the word both lead to one personality who is narayana narayana means one who is the abode of all objects other than him all entities other than him these entities could be chit chit means sentient beings atmas souls or achit insentient objects 
atmas which have consciousness and the matter which does not have consciousness. Both these category are held by Narayana, the Lord. Not only he holds them, he is also inside every one of the entities. So he is both all pervading at the same time all supporting. So this Narayana term is indicating the same Lord Vishnu and it does not fit to anyone else. So this Vaishnavam which is focused on Vishnu or Lord Narayana is the eternal Sampradayam or the religion which has its roots in Vedam. Vedam is another term which we are now getting into. Vedam is the scriptures which are eternal. Just like the Lord is eternal and all the entities, the Achit and the Chit, that is the sentience, uh, insentient and the sentient beings, as both of them, along with Lord Narayana, are eternal, the Shastram or the Vedam also is eternal. Vedam is said to be the divine will of the Lord. So this Vedam is having everything about the Lord. If you want to know about the Lord fully, the only scripture which reveals that is the Vedam. Now Vedam has two parts, Purvabhagam and Uttarabhagam. Purvabhagam is the first part which talks about the way to worship the Lord. And then Uttarabhagam, which is the Upanishads, it talks about the qualities and the nature of the Lord. So this Vedam, which, is, which has got two parts, is the source of knowledge. And this Vedam is the one which gives us information about Sri Vaishnavam. Now, we started with Vaishnavam and we are moving on to Sri Vaishnavam, that is because Lord Narayana is with his divine consort, who is Sri Maharashmi, always. They are inseparable. And Sri Mahalakshmi is the primary chief consort of the Lord. And one of Mahalakshmi's primary names is Sri and that is why this Vaishnavam is called Sri Vaishnavam because the Lord like Vishnu and Lakshmi are inseparable and they are together in helping us all the Atmas, all the souls in our progress. So this concept of Vaishnavam or the Sri Vaishnavam is founded based on Vedam and as Vedam is eternal, the Sampradayam or the philosophy based on that Vedam, which is Sri Vaishnavam, is also eternal. In Sri Vaishnavam, The emphasis for the parampara of Acharyas is very important. Now we have seen the Lord Sriman Narayana. He is called the Prameyam, the goal, the object. And then we saw about Vedam, which is the Pramanam. Pramanam is source of authentic source of knowledge, 
true knowledge. And then there is Pramata. Pramata means one who reveals, one who explains the Pramanam, using the, one who explains the Prameyam using the Pramanam. Basically, one who explains the Lord and his qualities and his activities and his um, incarnations and his wealth, his opulence, everything, using the Vedam, the scriptures. And the person who does that is called Pramata. And the Pramatas in our Sampradayam, they come in a Parampara. Parampara means a succession of personalities who propagate information. As we saw initially, Sriman Narayana is the one who actually reveals all this knowledge which is already available in Vedam. And he reveals that to Sri Mahalakshmi who is his dear consort. It is not that she lacks knowledge about this. She is already truly knowledge, knowledgeable. That is why she is totally committed to Lord Sri Narayana. Yet, to start the succession of teachers, he himself assumes the role of the Acharya and then he teaches the knowledge to Lakshmi. And from her, it descends down to all the way up to us, down to us actually, down to us through this succession of Acharyas. So we have seen basically three concepts, the Prameyam, the Pramanam and the Pramatha. Prameyam is the goal, which is Lord Sriman Narayana. And then there is Pramanam, the Vedam, which reveals about Lord Narayana, Sriman Narayana. And then Pramatha, who takes this Vedam and explains this to everyone. The teachers, basically. The teachers are the next in these three important concepts for us to understand. So when we look into Sri Vaishnavam, as we know, it got, it became popular during the times of Alvars. Alvars were the saints who were fully devoted to Lord Vishnu, Lord Sriman Narayana. They appeared towards the end of Dwapara Yuga and in the beginning of Kali Yuga. They propagated the message of Bhakti, the devotion, Sharanagati, total surrender to towards Lord Sriman Narayana. And after the time of Alvars, there were many Acharyas. Natha Munigal was considered as the first Acharya who appeared towards the end of 8th century and the ninth, beginning of 9th century. And subsequent to Natha Munigal, one by one, many Acharyas appeared and in the 11th century of common era, Sri Ramanuja appeared. And he revolutionized the whole Sampradayam. He took it to great heights. Now, even before Alvars, the concept and the philosophy was preserved and propagated by many sages, even in the olden days, even before the times, times of Alvars. Sage Bodhayana, Dramida, Tanka, and then there were Veda, Vyasa, Parashara, Sage Parashara, and many such rishis were there. They had all explained these concepts in various works of theirs. And this information was preserved through time. Still, when Alvars appeared, they brought in a lot of clarity. All of the literature 
until the time of Alvars, wherein Sanskritam. Now Alvars being born in the southern part of our Bharat Desham, which is the which is now called as India, they were all speaking Tamil, and when they speak Tamil, they understood the depth of Tamil language and the simplicity of the Tamil language, and they took the knowledge which is available in Sanskritam, in the Vedas, in the Upanishads, in the Puranams, in the Itihasams, and in the Pancharatra Agamam, and all of that. All of these are various texts, which are part of the whole um, Shastram, the body of scriptures, while Vedam and Vedam, which is basically um, two parts, as we have already seen, the first part is the um, rituals and the way to worship the Lord, and the second part is the Upanishads and the Brahma Sutram, which uh, deeply analyzes the aspects of the Lord. While these two uh, make up the uh, core of the scriptures, there are other scriptures like Smritis, Manu Smriti, Parashara Smriti, Yajnavalki Smriti. All of these smritis are there. And then there is Itihasams. Itihasams means epics, um, which explain the history as it happened. And the Itihasams are Sri Ramayanam and Sri Mahabharatam. These two are the most uh, revered epics. And then there are Puranams. Puranams are basically beyond time. Sri Ramayanam and Mahabharatam, we know, are specific to particular times, like Sri Ramayanam is specific to Sri Rama's time, which is the Treta Yuga. And then Mahabharatam is specific, specific to Dwapara Yugam, which is the time before now, the Kali Yugam. Uh, we are in Kali Yugam now. Before this was Dwapara Yugam, and Mahabharata happened in Kali Yugam. But Puranams are beyond these limited time they go all over the place, all over the time, and many of those are recorded by the sages at different times. Uh, initially, Brahma is the one who reveals all the Puranams. Depending on his quality and his uh, mode of um, attitude, basically, he himself says that in particular shlokam. Uh, basically, everyone in this uh, material realm, when you speak about material realm, we have to also understand that the Lord has spiritual realm, which is the Vaikuntha, and then the material realm, which is the Samsaram. This material realm is for his play, and spiritual realm, realm the Paramapadam or the Vaikuntha, is for his true joy. So he has his place and his sports in the samsaram in this material realm and the material realm is ever changing it now when when i spoke about satyugam treta yugam dwapara yugam kali yugam all of these concepts of time they work in the material realm and the material realm is huge uh, but it is bound by time but the spiritual realm is not bound by time. The Lord is the controller there. Here the time is the controller uh, under the guidance of Lord. But the, there in Vaikuntam, Lord is the direct controller. So he directly enjoys uh, his activities along with all his associates. So the spiritual realm, material realm concept needs to be also understood. So all of these defects which we are seeing now is limited to the material realm and Vaikuntam is free from all of these defects and we will talk about uh, reaching Vai Vaikuntam and um, how to do that and all, all of that which, which will be explained in subsequent sessions. When we come back, we will come back to the Puranams. The Puranams are again uh, in different times, which are happening in different times. 
and these are recorded by Brahma uh, depending on his different moods and different uh, qualities. Now, this is when I started explaining about material realm. Now, material realm has these th three different qualities, Sattvam, Rajas and Tamas. Sattvam means goodness, Rajas means passion um, and then Tamas means ignorance, confusion, all of that. Now everyone is bound by these three qualities and material realm is the only place where we, these three qualities exist in this mode, in this particular manner. In the spiritual realm, there is only pure goodness. There is no mixture of um, goodness, passion and the ignorance. In the material realm, there is always mixture. Even everyone is sometimes acting softly, intelligently, but other times they will be acting rudely and in very, very lethargic. Is bound by that. First, created person basically the creation happens in material realm again this is something which we need to ask, uh, understand also um, don't feel uh, that I'm going all over the place sometimes when we explain certain things uh, it's always good to have a little bit of context so that we understand the whole picture clearly that's why uh, when a particular new word, um, you know, comes into the um, talk, I try to explain that so that we get enough context in that. So when we saw about material realm, the material realm is so huge and it is made of thousands and thousands and thousands and millions and millions of undums. Undums are oval-shaped universes and in this universe, there are 14 layers. Um, the topmost layer is called Brahmalokam and the bottommost layer is called Pathalam. In between, we have our earthly layer. That is the eighth layer. So we have 14 layers in each of these andams and there are millions and millions of andams or universes in this material realm. And each of these andam or the universe has one Brahma at the top in the Brahma Lokam. And this Brahma sprouts from the navel of Lord Vishnu. And when he creates such Brahma in a particular universe, so uh, like Vishnu is also in every universe basically. In, any, in every one of these universe there is Vishnu and he actually um, brings out Vish, uh, Brahma from his navel um, after the creation of that particular universe. So there is continuous creation and destruction, annihilation are going on constantly. And as part of a creation, first the Lord creates the universe and then he picks um, the most pious person in the universe. One of the most pious persons, basically one of the most pious Atmas and he, he makes that Atma the uh, head of that particular universe, Brahma. And from Brahma, all the other uh, progenitors are created and the creation goes on. When the Brahma is created, Lord Vishnu teaches him Vedam because Brahma is going to use Vedam to do his creation. Like the Lord creates the initial setup and then he lets Brahma do the rest of the creation. Similarly, um, subsequently Brahma goes, goes on to you know, create uh, Rudra, Shiva, Shankara and then other many many devatas are created by Brahma um, during annihilation Lord lets Rudra do the annihilation to some extent and then finally he destroys Rudra as well and consumes him so initially Lord creates Brahma and then he lets Brahma do the rest of the creation at the end of the cycle he lets Rudra do the annihilation and then he finally consumes Rudra also and again every, everything else. So this process of creation and annihilation of multiple um, universes are going on forever and forever and forever. 
Now this material realm, um, I started talking about Brahma, uh, he has, he too has the qualities of Sattvam, Rajas and Tamas. So when he hears from Vishnu, he hears everything properly and then using the Vedam he starts creating and when he creates he also produces as the first student of the Lord Vishnu in the material uh, universe he is present. He is also um, presenting the Puranams and um, um, basically is presenting the Puranams for the benefit of everyone to understand the concept of Vedam easily because Vedam's, Vedam is very cryptic and it's very um, huge. Uh, in Vedam is, itself it is said Anantavai Vedaha that is Vedam is endless. So for us to comprehend, for general um, persons to can't comprehend, Vedam is very, very difficult. So to understand Vedam, we need some ancillary texts. And those are these Smritis and Itihasams and Puranams. And among those, Puranams are directly written by Brahma. And he himself says, when he is in the mode of goodness, he writes the glories of Vishnu in certain Puranams. When he is in the mode of passion, he writes about other Devatas like uh, himself and uh, um, Varuna and other Devatas. And then when he is in the mode of ignorance, when he is in the quality of ignorance, he writes about um, Rudra and Agni and certain Puranams which are in the mode of ignorance. So Puranams are also classified into the same category as goodness, passion, ignorance, sattvam, rajas and tamas. So all of these help everyone to understand Vedam. These Puranams help us understand Vedam and the Itihasams which come subsequently uh, Valmiki creates, uh, writes or compiles Sri Ramayanam which explains the life of Sri Rama and then Veda Vyasa explains Mahabharatam which explains the life of Krishna. So these two make the Itihasams. So these Puranams, Itihasams, um, Manusmriti and other Smritis are ancillary to Vedam uh, which has both the Purva Bhagam and the Uttara Bhagam that is the Vedantam. Um, and all of this Vedam is explained through these additional literature. So, the material realm is present and then there is spiritual realm. Atmas are present everywhere. We started talking about Chit and Achit, matter and souls. Now, souls are present everywhere. We saw Vaikuntam and then we saw Samsaram, this material realm. Both in Vaikuntam and Samsaram, there are innumerable souls and they have been there forever in both places. Now in Vaikuntam, there are two kinds of souls. One is called Nitya Suris. Nitya Suris means, means they are the et eternal associates of Lord. They never separate from the Lord. Wherever the Lord goes, they even accompany Him and they are always enlightened. And then there is Muktas, Muktatmas those who are liberated. Now these are the souls who were in material realm and they were freed from the bondage cycle of birth and death. So these two categories are in Vaikuntam. In the samsaram, in this material realm, there are Baddha Jeevatmas. Baddha Jeevatmas means those who are bound souls. And these bound souls who are in this samsaram, they have always been here. It is not that they came from anywhere else. Because as the Atma is eternal and as the Lord is eternal and concept of liberation as explained in Vedantam is that when an Atma becomes liberated, the Atma would never be bound again. So, it is impossible to imagine that the Atmas came from 
somewhere else into this samsaram and that we took up this suffering upon ourselves or it was enforced upon us it is not like that the atmas were always uh, forever in the samsaram the badha jivatmas and there is opportunity for everyone to go to vaikuntham and that is the process of liberation and this will be explained subsequently so in this we have seen a fair uh, bit of concepts and terminologies so we talked about um sri vaishnavam which is uh, eternally existing sampradayam it is based on vedam and vedantam uh, which is basically one body of literature uh, it talks about vedam and vedantam basically talks about sri man narayana uh, who is the supreme lord and sri mahalakshmi is his divine consort so we talked about the pramathas the teachers who reveal this knowledge to us uh, in a succession and this succession is succession is started by lord shri manarayana himself he is the first acharya and he teaches shri mahalakshmi and then from mahalakshmi we have many acharyas coming in the lineage and ramanuja acharya being the main um, acharya who formalized and who established sri vaishnavam as as it is seen today and in the grandier manner which is um which we are seeing today um in an organized manner he established many acharyas he uh, asked everyone to go and preach the philosophy to reach out to everyone so that everyone can be um acquiring this knowledge valuable knowledge from the shastram and then look out for their own well being of being liberated eventually and we have seen a little bit about the material realm and the spiritual realm the that is the samsaram and vaikuntham we have seen a little bit about satvam rajas tamas and how the devatas are also working in this particular mode of satvam rajas tamas um we have seen about how the concepts are presented by alvars in simple tamil and how the acharyas took it uh, took these concepts and explained it so this is a brief introduction um there is lot more which we can discuss but uh, for now i'll stop here and see if there are any particular questions please download our coil k o y i l app from google play store or apple app store to listen to or download upanyasams like these our website portal is k o y i l dot o r g